my little brother Billy. My little brother Anthony. You know, this right now in the world is a big sporting event. They, they, they call it the World Cup. Uh, some people call it the World Cup of football, some soccer, or whatever. It's, it's the World Cup. People are playing, mm. <laughs> you know, and they're playing in Brazil. And, and I brought to mind some stuff, some bring bring back my my Brazilian memories, but they don't start right. They see the see the thing is, uh, uh, I used to take a thing called uh, capoeira. Mm -hmm. Capoeira is a martial arts form, and uh, uh, I took it for for a number of years. You know, uh, actually, first I learned about capoeira in the early '80s, like 1980, 1980, whatever it was, because uh, there's a, a form called they did call hegenal. But it starts with an R, like regional, mm. you know. And this form uh, was, was sort—I of, won't say made up, but it was, uh, well, it was made up. <laughs> it's, it's based on a thing called uh, Capoeira Angola. And uh, but these two guys, um, basically, I found out about it because uh, I used to take uh, dance classes. See, because um, in the early '80s, I was doing a lot of stage managing and, and basically uh, stage managed dance troops. So one, one of those guys. That what I gotta do is I gotta immerse myself in the things. So, so to understand the dancers, I took dance classes. And one of the classes I took from this guy named uh, Laura Mel Machado uh, from Brazil. And he, and he, he had this cat called uh, Laura Mel and, and, and Shalom. They're the ones that brought Capoeira uh, out to the States. You see, they're from Brazil, from the southern part of you know, San Paulo, somewhere around there. So, anyway, the, so, uh, so I, did, I, mean, I knew about the form, and, and I took classes, and so I no more dance classes, not that they had classes for head to now, but I wasn't interested in it, because you know, they would do those little kinds of, you know, they wear no, they had no shirt, and more macho, and they had belts, you know, like, uh, you know, like, like karate belts, and with different degrees, I'm not really into that hierarchy kind of thing, you know, and so, uh, and so I, you know, so basically I just left it alone, you know, it's cool, but I just left it alone. But then in the, in the, in the early 90s, like 92, 93, somewhere around there, uh, this cat, uh, Jao Grande, uh, I think what happened, I think I was going to some sort of dance studio and downstairs was the Capoeira Academy, Jao Grande's, you know, upper academy for, for, for Capoeira. And I immediately said, hey, this is, I know, I know this thing, but this is what I'm looking for because, you know, well, that's it was just authentic, you know. See, because Capoeira and, and, and Aguilero, so which we are Ang yeah, we're hatching out people, and you have, we, uh, we do, to do uh, uh, Angola, we would call them Angleros. We're, we're, we're all Capoeiristas, whatever it is, we're Angleros. Uh, but it's a low form to the ground, you know, it's low to the ground, you jenga, you know, just, it's really, 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 really nice, you know. And um, so, I took, so I took classes, you know. Uh, but what, I re what really happened was, you see, I had this tough job when I was arts director for WBAI radio, and it was like it was like it was one of these nonprofits. You know, you get a job, and your your, your day never ends. Star show, it just never ends because you, you're about to. You're about, I'm a I'm a tasker. You know, I'm a, I'm a, you know you do this task, and you gotta keep on going with it. But anyway, so what happens? I really took it so I can have an excuse to get off to stop what I was doing. I had to. I gotta go to class, you know, you know. So like three times a week, I gotta go to class. You know, plus on Saturdays for stretching class, because I have problems, you know, with my, with, you know, I'm not a good stretcher, you know, like that. So anyway, so I'm, I'm, I'm taking classes, really, really, really nice, 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 nice. But I bring all that up just to say there's a phrase in black, you know, black English, black American. It's called like he's got game or he got game. You know, we don't say he has. You know, we he got game. I said, I was thinking about that because in, in Capoeira, you know, in, in, in this Angelos, you know, it, it's called a game, you know, you, you, you're playing a game. So it's not a combative thing because you have, you have your bandana, you have your, you have your band when you play your, you have your bear and bows, three kinds of bear and, um, bear and bows, you have, you have, you have uh, uh, instruments, you know, and the guys are sitting there and, and, they're, and they're singing, you know, and then you have the game. Uh, but the thing is that the game itself is controlled by the band and the singing. So if something happening, you know, and then the horde, the horde is called the, the circle, you know, when, it, when it, we're doing the game, if something's happening, it's getting on toward, the, the band actually can control the tempo of the game so it can pull somebody out of something if something's going wrong. So it's really slick, you know, it's really good. And it's, I think it's one of the only two martial arts forms I know that's controlled by, that has music. So anyway, so it's, it's like a game. So you're not, you know, not trying to beat up on somebody. It's like a dance. You're dancing with them, you know. Okay, so I'm sorry that. 
It's just long-winded thing, but I got to explain the thing you know, precisely. And so, um, and so what I'm the, what, what I'm at now is that oh, basically I see that people ain't got no game. When I say ain't got no game, you know, I mean, you know, like to give an example, like uh, the American uh, general uh, Colin Powell, right? I don't know what. But, we talked about Alambe Braff. Now, Alambe Braff went to the same grade school as Colin Powell, or junior high school as Colin Powell. So was a, he, they were both, both on a basketball team, you know? Think of, you know, Colin, big Alambe smoke, but this man, you know what I'm saying? There's a picture. Alambe showed me the picture of him and Colin Powell, you know, because Colin Powell's from the South Bronx, you know? And so, you know, but so Colin Powell may have game, but as soon as he got up in front of the United Nations, you know, it talked about like you get this little thing here that got this dangerous, and you know we got to find weapons and masses, whatever they were saying. You know, all the brothers are watching this stuff in their barber shop and going like, "Yo, man, the boy lying." You know, that means he ain't got no game because he got to lie. He ain't got no game. You see what I'm saying? So, so, so what happens is, is if you ain't got no game, you. Well, you ain't got no game. So you have things like, okay, like those cats up in uh, in, in, in uh, Kenya or Nigeria, where they are, you know, ripping, you know, kidnapping people. Well, if you got to use force, you ain't got no game. You know, you ain't using your mind. You got to use force. If you if you if you in India and you a dude in India and you get with a bunch of dudes and you got to jump on some little girl and 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 and, and you know, rip her apart, kill her, whatever have you, well, you ain't got no game. You see what I'm saying? So, I mean, like, we talked about Edward Snowden before, but one of these things, right? Well, you know, if you, if you know, Edward Snowden, he got game. That boy got game. You know? Because, you know, you got the whole military, you know, trying to get you and not even talk about what you're talking about. You ain't got no game. You know? And so, I guess what, what, what I'm saying is like all those, all those cats, you know, Shao Grande, you know, all the, but he came from Pristina and then I met all those guys when I was in Brazil, you know what I mean? Uh, Morales and, and you know, all these, all these cats, you know, but they got game. And let me show you, you know, you know, I, you know, I got my ID here, but what you may not notice, I always attach to this cat here, this American Indian, he's Lakota, this is Red Cloud. Now Red Cloud is the only cat that beat up on the United States Army and lived to tell. <laughs> so I carry Red Cloud because Red Cloud got game. You see, I got Che here. Che had game. You know? Now, these folks here that's doing what they're doing in the world today in the name of whatever, and they gotta be surreptitious. <laughs> they gotta be, you know? Nah, man. I'm not with it, so, but, but but that's just me though, because I'm nothing but an audio dramatist. But well, as an audio dramatist, guess what? I got game, man. As an audio dramatist, I got game. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. uh, so I, you know, that's, but, anyway, this look, this has been one of those dispatches from the audio drama, and, you know, from from the audio drama, dramatist emeritus, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm just I'm just t from the Pattersons taking the train to Tibet, letting you know. But I only suspect. Yeah,